Feels good to just hit record. Not care. Welcome to a new kind of video. Alright, so I wanted to make like a Hazel devlog. And, uh, like I've always struggled with the idea of making devlogs because, and I think a lot of YouTubers probably face this, because when you're making content for YouTube, it's not necessarily, doesn't really necessarily re represent well what it's like to actually, you know, engineer software, whether it be like a game engine or if you're actually working on like a video game and so you're making like a, a devlog for your video game. Like it's, it's hard to try and base content around it, especially when the areas that you're working on are seemingly boring. And like, I mean, I have the under, I, I have this idea that nothing, like you can make something interesting no matter what it is. It doesn't matter how boring or mundane a task you're working on is. Like you can find a way to make it interesting. And that is what this video is. This video is an attempt to kind of provide you with some content and some update as to what's going on with Hazel, uh, even though there's not much going on, at least from my side at the moment. And the stuff that is going on is more or less like kind of behind the scenes, like software engineering practices and processes and <laughs> stuff like that. So ever since probably like October last year, which was like optimization October, I've had this kind of uh, thing that I've wanted to do, which has ultimately been to like, you know, just make Hazel higher quality. Um, because the thing is when, when you kind of have a base set of features, which we do, like we've made several games using Hazel now, right? Like we've made, we made that fragile game within like 12 hours, Tim and I, then Peter, Tim and I made forest for Ludum Dare 50. Right. And, and Tim made this kind of script invaders game as well, which was like a space invaders clone, but with like, you know, a lot more stuff going on. And then I also made like the rocket game in like an hour and a half. So we, we technically have four games. Well, there's other projects as well behind the scenes, but there's four like more or less playable games that we've made using Hazel in like the last six months or so. And like, this is just a fantastic opportunity, I think, to go back over what we've got and refine it. Because the problem is that as, as you kind of get further along, anything that you're developing, you can just keep adding features and clunking everything together. But the, fur the further down you get, you know, down the track, the, the harder it becomes to be like, hang on, wait a minute, is what we've got, does it work well? Is it well optimized? You know, will it, will it kind of perform across a range of hardware and runtime devices? Right? Or is it like really kind of like specific and narrow in the way that it works, but it's still kind of good enough? Do we keep jamming features in? Or do we kind of slow down and refine what we've got to make sure that it's as solid as possible before we move on? And like that latter approach there, like I'm really a big, a, a big fan of that because it's just, it's so, first of all, it's really satisfying to just make something that's actually good, <laughs> right? But then also, if you build a strong foundation, then when you start adding more stuff onto it, that foundation is going to support the stuff better. If you just keep piling on new features on new features without going back and making sure everything is really good, then eventually you're going to come to the point where stuff just doesn't work and it's going to be a huge pain to go over everything and fix it. And so that's why like, I've kind of been focusing a little bit more on thinking about you know how we can maybe take Hazel and make it a high quality product. So there's been like a few changes to the actual way that we do things in the Hazel team. Now, by the way, for all of you watching on YouTube, like I don't know how much you care about this stuff. Like it's difficult for me to gauge because I've been in this Hazel world for a while. And so that's why like these devlogs, they're ultimately supposed to be um, something that hopefully shows you, you know, what it's like to actually work on like a, a decently sized project with a team. I think that's useful content to, to people who want to also either build their own game engines or just, you know, become potentially better engineers. Uh, but also it, it, it should be some somewhat entertaining, I hope. So, you know, if you guys just let me know in the comments what you think of these videos and what you would like to see more in devlogs, uh, that would be very helpful because I've like literally, there hasn't been a devlog since probably last year because I haven't really been able to pinpoint how to make one which seems weird because I've made so many in the past, but I don't know what I'm doing. So <laughs> I've been, I've been, I've, I've gotten too deep into the code and into the like actual engineering that coming back and making videos and devlogs on Hazel seems a bit weird, which is why you're getting this weird video here 
which anyway, whatever. So Hazel's users are pretty much all patrons. Patreon.com slash the channel, if you don't know, is where you support like Hazel and what we're doing and all of that. And then you get access to like all of the source code. So if you if we if we take a look at like the the users that we have there, obviously the people downloading the engine, you know, most people are going to hit the master branch because that's the default branch on the on like the GitLab repository. So the idea obviously is that we want that to be as good as possible. Now, currently, master has been uh, basically something that we treat as a development branch. So, in obviously, like in a small project, when you kind of begin, you know, you, you, you might break off to different branches as you add features or fix certain issues, right? But then eventually you merge that back into master and then, you know, master's like your main branch. And then you kind of maybe do a lot of work there as well because, you know, it's a small enough project where it doesn't matter too much. But as the project grows in, grows in size, you kind of want to, uh, you know, maybe like you really need to pay a little bit more attention to the quality of your main branch because the complexity of the software increases to the point where it might not be trivial to fix issues, but also like it becomes way, way, way harder to test the everything, <laughs> right? Like if you have an engine with five features, then it's just easy to run through all of that. You know, maybe try and open a bunch of different scenes, hit play. Uh, does it work? Yes. Uh, do I hear audio? Yes. Move on. Done. You know, but obviously like, you know, imagine something the size of unity or unreal. Imagine if you had something that big, how are you possibly going to test every feature? Like it's pretty much impossible, right? And then obviously when you look at teams like, like those, they have a lot of, they'll have a lot of infrastructure in place for things like that. Not just dedicated QA teams that will actually run through everything, right? But then there's probably like a lot of automation going on to make sure that like certain tasks that can be automated, obviously automatically by a computer, that can be done because it becomes really, really taxing and expensive to have a human run over every possible action in Unity, right? Like that's just not going to fly. And so that's why like, you know, unit testing is not something that is, that I believe is, is fully appropriate for a game engine. Uh, it's, it's, it's definitely useful for some things, you know, like I'm thinking of like, maybe like, I don't know, the math library or something, right? Like obviously there are a lot of things that you can unit test and you can easily feed in a bunch of inputs, have a bunch of expected outputs, you know, try and boil it down to one unit of work, and then maybe you've got a way to actually properly test something. But in a lot of cases, you know, if I want to, for example, load a 3D model and render it, and does that work, and then hit play, and is the physics responsive, and, you know, what, how long does that take, and all of that stuff, that's clearly, like, something that you can't really unit test. So it becomes a little bit more of a creative process where you might design some kind of, you know, automation code that will, for example, try and load a 3D model, hit play, and then see, first of all, are there any errors? Does it crash? <laughs> Does it run? You know, and also possibly even capture maybe frames of certain scenes and compare them, you know, just like an image diff, really, compare them to like, the previous version, like, because we probably wouldn't expect graphics to change, right? Um, and that's obviously, you know, if you can load a 3D model and display it and the pixels match up with like what it was like in the previous version, then you can probably say that that does in fact work. So my point with all of this is just to say that as the project grows, you clearly like also have to like grow in terms of how you develop the project and how you try and maintain quality for that project. And so for Hazel, I think that's probably long overdue. I mean, as soon as we had an engine that was capable of making anything really, I think it was pretty much time to do this. And that is to kind of uh, more or less move to like releases. So what I've done is I've basically like said that the master branch is now completely locked. No one can actually commit to that except for me. And uh, you know, so the entire team basically works off of this dev branch. And the dev branch is called dev, and it's basically like master, you know, in the sense that like, it's a, it's like the central hub for everyone on the team to like merge their, their features into, 
right? So if you're working on like animation or physics or scripting or like audio or whatever, and you've just introduced some new things in your like audio branch and you want to merge it in, you merge it into dev now instead of merging it into master. And then what happens is master is like the release branch. So in other words, like master is the branch that is uh, supposed to represent a release, which means that it doesn't get updates too frequently. So every now and then, you know, we'll merge something into master, we'll, we'll merge dev into master, but then like, that's not going to be that often. And when that happens, before it really gets published into master, it's getting very bright here, before it gets published into master, it will be like, we'll test it, you know, we'll QA kind of test it, make sure that everything works. Uh, you know, we'll do a proper testing pass over it instead of just kind of merging it in and being like, does it compile? Does it run? That's it. <laughs> Which is kind of like what's been happening at the moment. Like it's everyone just kind of merges into master and then like, there's no real guarantee of quality. And then, you know, like if I take a break from Hazel and then I come back to it after a while, you know, because I'm working on like the ray tracing series or the game engine series or whatever. And then I'm like, oh, this doesn't work anymore. <laughs> you know, it becomes a little bit annoying because there's, there's no real guarantee that, that something works. And I think that like for people who obviously who like support the project and our patrons and all of that, like there should be, I think at this point, some expectation of quality when it comes to Hazel. And so that's kind of what, what we're doing, um, at the moment we're, we're moving more towards like a release model, which is very exciting because like, you know, when it comes down to it, um, I, I do want to eventually release Hazel as like a, a, a kind of an engine, just like as a, like a binary release that people can download and play around with, even if you don't like pledge money to the project. Um, and obviously like, you know, the way that we run it at the moment, like if it, it's, it's on Patreon and, you know, thanks to the supporters on Patreon, like we're able to like hire people like Tim and Peter, you know, to work on the project and get paid for it. You know, um, I can dedicate obviously a lot of my time working on Hazel as well. So like the supporters are extremely important to the project. Like it wouldn't be, it wouldn't be at the state that it's in if it wasn't for those people, you know, on Patreon supporting us. So that has to remain to some degree. Otherwise the project will just fall apart. But I do want to eventually release like Hazel for free as like a binary release so that people can actually play around with it, maybe make something with it. Um, I think that would be really cool to kind of do in the future. So this is exciting because it's kind of like a step in that direction. Like we're actually saying now that, you know, we're introducing the concept of releases and we're introducing the concept of like, you know, we have like a version of Hazel that has a set of features. Those features are tested and those features work well, you know? So, Yay, <laughs> exciting stuff. Um, yeah, like, and, and as I mentioned, there's, there's a bunch of like automation stuff that goes into this as well. Like I want to set up like a laptop. I have like this old laptop from like five years ago or something. I want to set that up in the office as like some sort of uh, continuous integration machine and maybe integrate that with GitLab CI so that we can actually, you know, for every commit, well, especially into master, but probably the dev branch as well, Every commit that comes in, you know, gets built in every configuration, debug, release, dist. Um, you know, uh, we have some kind of automation that will launch like Hazelnut and maybe the Hazel runtime, you know, after it compiles successfully um, to make sure that like we can load maybe all of the scenes that come shipped kind of with the engine in the sandbox project, you know, making sure that like we can run everything without crashing, just like some base level CI, I guess, just some base level testing to make sure that that stuff does in fact work. I think that would be good. So I might show that in like the next devlog or something. This has been kind of a discussion devlog. I don't know, like th this has been a very spontaneous video. Like I kind of just s set up the camera here and I thought I would just talk to it for fun and see what happens. Um, but I guess this is probably like a, a decently interesting video. So. Let me know what you guys thought of this devlog. Um, it's kind of more, more of like a, it, it reminds me of something that I would have done back in the day where I just would have done like a little vlog type, type deal and talked to the camera for a while about stuff. So yeah. Anyway, let me know what you guys think of these sorts of videos. And if you want to see more of this kind of chill style vlog content, I don't know, maybe I'll put more of this stuff up onto the channel on plug channel. Um, cause that channel is kind of more for, for this stuff, I guess. 
Uh, but yeah, we'll see how this video, I guess, goes here. And if you guys want to see more, just let me know in the comment section below. Because it has been a while since the last devlog, like there are a lot of features. They're mostly minor stuff, but I guess they're kind of interesting. Obviously there's been a lot of work that's gone into Hazel. A lot of it, as I mentioned, has been kind of going back and, and refining the quality of certain areas and systems in the engine. But there's also been like a bunch of stuff that um, is new and it is new, right? And and I'm kind of certainly working on like the, distri the distribution side of things when I have the chance, which is more or less ma making sure that we can package assets appropriately and ship them in like a runtime format. Um, and then, yeah, as I mentioned, we do have a bunch of features. So I might run through some of those like in the next devlog and we'll also potentially talk about like setting up that CI thing. But yeah, that's kind of my plan. So <laughs> hope you enjoyed. I'll see you all later. Goodbye.